Hi there, this is Art and Such with the Rainbow Loom tutorial for Princess from The Walking Dead. And this is for a request that came in on Instagram. For this pattern, you're going to need some brown and green. I have two shades of blue I'm using and some pink. I've also used a, cl a clear, like a white or clear around the neck. That is sort of optional. You've got some flexibility there. And I have one silver for the belt buckle or gray. I'm using the tan skin tone and black bands on the hair and for the eyes I used a couple of pearl beads. You could also use black or white band, well black and or white bands there. And these are threaded through with the piece of dental floss and the pupils drawn on with a black sharpie marker so I will show you how to do that a little later. For the goggles I took two big black shiny beads that I had and I threaded them through with black thread and pulled that through and attached it or tied it at the back. So that is one option if you have beads that work. If you'd like to use bands, I would suggest going for maybe a silver, um, something that will stand out a little against the hair. And if that's a route you choose to go, you might wrap a couple bands, pull them onto doubled over singles and, uh, and stitch them on when you're done everything. Another two options I thought of that you could use for the goggles are to take wire and twist the wire around. Or another possibility would be if you've got a picture of goggles or small toy goggles, you could, you could print the picture, put it on a piece of cardboard, stick that on that way. So those are a couple of options. That's what you're going to need for bands, uh, as well as a C-clip. And I'm just going to be using the standard loom in the offset configuration. And the last thing you will need is your hook. And if I didn't mention it there, a C-clip. So without further ado, I'm gonna put my camera down here. We will grab the hook and we're gonna start on the boots. So for our boots, we have, oh, and I'll put those in here. Okay, we've got brown. And if you'd like to use black or a different color, I'm sure that would work out just fine. And for the boots, we've got two browns wrapped on the hook. Once and twice. We're going to take another two browns and put them on the end. Slide your wrapped bands over. And before we replace, we'll take a single, put it over the top, and wrap one, two, three times so that when we put this back on, that will sit in the middle. Okay, even that out a little if you can. And this is what you should have at this part. From here, we're gonna take two more brown bands and pull them through. You want to try and keep these in order as best you can when they're going over. And we will replace. And then we are gonna take one brown band, stretch it, twist it, double it over. I'm going to transfer it to my the fingers of my left hand, put it on the end with a little tension, and slide it through. So that is your shoe, and then we can go on to the pants. Now my legs are a little bit long here. If you want to take out one set to make it shorter, you certainly can. This is what it looks like with the, the, full, um, the full row. So what I did here is I took two greens, and I put them on the hook and slid through and then repeated that two more times so that I'm getting three sets of double bands. And I wanted the legs to be a little bit thicker as they got higher up. So I did use more bands in the remaining rows. I'll tell you what those numbers are. But if you're looking to save your bands or that feels like too much, you can keep it at two for each row there. Uh, what I did is the next four sets, I used three bands. So I'm going to put three on and three and three and one more fourth time. I'm going to use three of the bands. And the last part here is two sets with four bands each. So again, if that feels like too much or too long, you can take off one band or you can take off one set. 
Uh, I'm gonna do, <coughs> excuse me, both again. So here are four. <coughs> oh. And one more time, we'll put on four. Sorry about that. Um, actually, I feel like my legs were a little long, so I'm gonna leave up that last set this time. And you can put it in or leave it out. And we'll put on two more green bands and that will be one leg complete. So you can put this on a holding hook if you like or on a C-clip. I'm gonna just leave it on my hook but I'm gonna push it down so it's out of the way. And we'll start the next boot. So two brown bands wrapped twice, three times if you like. Hold on to two bands and we are going to turn the hook over, wrap a single one, two, three, four times. Replace, even it out. Two more brown bands. Slide it through everything. And something feels twisty here. Hold on. Oh, I see, I didn't get the, the other one. Let's try that again. Okay. And then we need a single, no, yep, a single band doubled over, I believe, is where we're at there. Slide it through, even it out a little, and back onto the green. So there were three sets of two. And this is the third one. I had four sets of three. So I'm gonna put on three and again three. And then two more times with three each time. And you can put one or two sets of four bands, depending on how long and how thick you want the legs to be. I'm just gonna do the one, as I said. I I think the first time it was a little bit long for my liking, but it's it's okay that way too. And then two bands and put those on, and that's your second leg complete. Okay, you can once more put it on the side or just push it out of the way. We will make the arms next. So we need a couple of skin tone bands. I'll show you what the arms look like again. And for the arms, I did use a lot of thicker sets to give it that puffy jacket look. If you wanna save on your bands or it's getting too hard, you can always, again, reduce use to what a time set. We're gonna start with the hands. And for that, you'll need two skin tone bands. You're gonna wrap them onto your hook once and twice. Put it onto two bands, also skin tone. And replace. And then the rest of the arm is gonna be pink. So I used six sets of four bands. So that means four bands, and then four bands, and then four bands, six times. Okay, you will probably actually get a comparable thickness with three. If you use two, it's gonna be a little skinny, but, um, or it won't be thick and puffy anyway, but it is at your discretion and you do what will work best for you. So there, I've done four sets. And five. I'm trying to make sure I get them all through each time. And one more time. And then we're gonna grab two bands of the same color and slide those through. And that is one arm done. And we repeat. So I'll push that out of the way. Grab two skin tone, wrap once and twice. Pull onto two skin tone. And again, I'm using six sets of four pinks. Nice 
is four. Sometimes I like to just line my my arms or my pieces up together and see if they're working out to about the same height. So that looks okay. And we've got two more pink to go on. All right. So those are our limbs, and we are ready to go to the loom. This this actually I think isn't too bad a project to do. It's not too 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 hard compared to some of the others. Now let me grab my little picture, my diagram. And we can start at the top center, two skin tone, go down to the second one in the center. If you are trying to save skin tones, you could do this in white or cream, or if you've got a very pale pink, you might do that as well. And from here, I chose, as I said, this very clear whitish color, um, the translucent white or jelly white, because that's sort of like the kerchief or undershirt that she wears. I'm coming down on either side from the second center to the second side. From there, we'll come down. Okay. Picture turned on me here. Okay, once on each row from the second to the third pegs with that same clear. hard time seeing my picture here oh you know what that's that was a mistake we're gonna switch to hmm. okay on the sides you can take those off actually because we're gonna use the, our light blue there okay that looks right now okay sorry that's my mistake second to third light blue either side you can still have that clear color in the middle and then we'll do a light blue in the middle from the third to the fourth pecs. So this is what we've got so far. Grab your dark blue and we're going to come down on each row two times with double blues. From here we switch to green and on each of the rows, each of the columns, we'll take uh, one set of double green and place it down. So you should now be at your sixth pegs down on either side and your seventh peg down in the middle. That's where our bands ought to end here. Okay, I think we are yeah, we are ready to put on our limbs and then we'll do a side extension for the jacket and then we're ready to loop up the body. So that was pretty fast. You can take the arms, they should be, they're probably the first thing at the end of your hook. You're going to transfer the bands onto the second peg down on either side. And if you want or you need to, you can um, take it up and turn it, turn it around so that the arms are curling the, in the direction that you like. Uh, by this I mean, you can see here, it's curving in. If for some reason you wanted it to go this way instead, or if it came out this way and you wanted it to curve in, you could take it off, turn it around, put it back on. Um, okay, that's our arms. For our legs, we're going to have them on the hook, take two green, and slide both of the legs over. This will go across the bottom most side pegs that we've used, so we'll put the six on either side. Show you what this looks like right here. Okay, and let me go to my next picture here. We are going to take um, a green. And if you'd like, you can double these over. It will make the body a little more narrow. I'm gonna put this across all of the six pegs and make a little triangle there. 
and I'm gonna do a blue one above that and another dark blue and this last one I'm gonna do in a light blue okay and one more thing I believe only one more thing before we can get the body going and that is a side chain to create this pink jacket part so we will take a single or a uh, pink wrap it once and twice on the hook and we'll slide it onto three sets of two pink bands. So that's one, two, and three. And to attach the chain, we're gonna take the part that's on the hook and put it over the, be the peg that has the arm. And on the bottom of the chain, you're gonna stretch out that little circle and that's gonna go onto, um, the last peg that has blue on it where the green starts. So that's your fifth peg down. So let me place this on and I'll show you what it looks like. Almost got it there. Make sure you get all those pieces over. Okay, and this is the bottom of the chain and this is the top. And from each of the sections, I'm gonna take one little piece and pull it over the third peg down and one will go over the fourth peg down and that keeps this from coming from popping away from the body let's do this for the other side i'll go a little faster single wrap twice hold on to three sets of two bounds and we attach this between um, our top part on the second peg down and the bottommost part goes on that what do we say fourth peg fifth peg down okay and there we go and grab a piece out of each of your sections bring it over and over okay if you are all set then we can start looping up so I'm gonna start on the side and if you've done some looming before, you know that we're going to be reaching for the bottom most set of two bands. And that means pushing back everything above them. So I'm going to the sixth peg down on the side closest to me. I'm going to push back the top three bands that I see. That's the legs and the holding band. And I'm going to hook up the bottom two. You can pull it to the side or use your hook if that is helpful. And wrap it over onto the peg above. Then we reach through until you get to the bottom two blue. Bring them carefully up and around and over onto the next peg. And we'll repeat that. So push back your holding band, bring it forward and get past that extension, which is the pink part, push it forward. And on this last one, when you're reaching through, you want to get the bottom two clear ones or whichever color you use to come down this way. So this first row is looped up and inwards to the second peg from the top. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. So you might find it helpful to turn your loom around or uh, as I said before, you could always pull the bands out with your finger or your hook if you're having a hard time seeing them. Just make, You want to just make sure that you're getting the right ones. Okay, so once you've looped up the other side and into the middle, we're going to go back down to that seventh peg where the legs are, get the bottom most green and loop it over onto the peg above. Reach in there for the bottom two blue and loop those forward. And you're going to keep going up until the very top of the loom this time. And there shouldn't be a lot in your way except on that second peg. There are a couple of things, but you're going to just go all the way through for your skin tone and bring that up. All right, so hold on to the bands on your top peg and you can release the other pieces from the loom. You're just about ready to start on the, on the face. Uh, I'll also note, I have not done the belt or the leg band yet. Those we're gonna do kind of as a post-processing finishing touch. All right, once you got your princess mostly loosened up you can put your hook through all of the bands on that top uh, top center peg 
and you're gonna pop that off and carefully release the rest. Okay, now I just wanted to make a note. I, I want this side to be on the back myself where the kind of crotch comes down vertically. I like the way, well, anyway, I like the way this side looks a little bit better. It's actually pretty close this time. Uh, but if you have a side you prefer, you want your hook to be going um, going through so that the the good side, the side that's going to face up, is is pointing away, pointing towards the opening of your hook. Because when we put it down, it's going to kind of go on like backwards. And then when we flip this, it'll go where we want it to go. So I feel like that sounded confusing. But just basically, the way that it goes down is going to be like back down. So the... Or, yeah, ah, now I'm confusing myself. Um, I think we've got the good side facing down. Either way, so I think it's going to be pretty close either way, you do, whichever way you do it. So we should be okay whichever way it goes on, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, it just kind of froze up there. Alrighty, let's get going with the hair. We're going to come back to the top of the loom with two blacks, top center to top right. Repeat on the other side. And on each of the rows, we'll come down once with two black bands. This is a pretty standard, traditional face. It's nothing terribly fancy or hard on this guy. Well, girl. So, yeah. Here we are. We're going to change the skin tone and come down three times in the center with double bands. I think I'm going to put a couple of my... My bad's way here, they're getting them away a little. Okay, we are done with most of our colors, so I'll clear some space. And three sets of double skin tone in the middle. Two sets on each of the sides. And I will hold this up for you in just a minute. It's of course easier to put these down when it's sort of flat here. And then we're going to take two from the fourth on one side to the fifth in the center. So it's going to come down diagonally and repeat that on the opposite side. Okay. We can take a black band and double it over and stretch it across the second pegs down in a triangle. Now I'm choosing black here instead of the skin tone because if a little bit shows through, it'll look like it looks like the eyebrows, which is sort of an effect we want. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. We are going to do a single doubled over skin tone across the fourth pegs down. So that will make another triangle. And you can put the body on now if you like. So yeah, I think that's right. We want the, the side you want to face forward should be facing down when you put it on the loom. That's what we want. Okay, if you want to wait another minute and do the eyes and then add that on, that's another thing you can do. It's, but it's okay to put it on now. For the eyes, I have a couple of small pearl beads. Now these ones I have happen to have pupils drawn on them already. So I'm gonna use these and leave them there. They're ready to go. If, you, uh, if you're doing beads of your own and you wanna add on some pupils, you can always use, as I say, a permanent marker to, to get that effect. And in order to get these onto a band, I will thread a piece of dental floss through both. I'm going to take a single band and I'm going to double it over. If you feel like this is, uh, if this is a new skill for you, this is a little too challenging. You can keep it as a single, but either way, you're going to have your band. You're going to put your floss through and bring it back over. And then it's going to go back. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. And then it's going to go back down through the beads. So it's come through the band, it's going back through the beads from the opposite direction this time. Now if you have beads that have larger holes, of course you can 
put them right onto your hook and then transfer them on that way. It's of course a lot easier to do that method, but this isn't so bad this way once you get the hang of it. Uh, and if the dental floss isn't working and you'd like to try with a, a needle and thread, like a beady needle, that would be another option as well. This one doesn't want to go. I think I need some stronger floss here. This stuff is a little bit flimsy, but I think I can do it. Just going to take another minute here. Another thing is if you are struggling a little bit, you could take a pair of scissors and trim the edge to make sure it is straight and not frayed because that will give you a hard time. So it went through the beads, through the elastic, back out and back through. And I'm going to pull this until it's on the beads, sorry, on the band. And as I'm doing this, I can also put this across my third pegs down. So as I slide it on, I've got it settled on here. Depending on the what width of the hole in your bead, this could be this could take a little bit of delicacy, but usually it works out okay. I don't break bands too often doing using this method. Okay, so let me put this on and I'll tell you or show you one other oh, almost had it there. One other way that you can do the eyes, because I did mention bead or bands as an alternative. I guess beads are the alternative to bands, but another way would be to do with the bands. So let me show you that really quickly. If you don't want to do this, you want to do bands, you could take your black and around your hook. One, two, three. You can use another color as well if you choose to. You can do a second one. One, two, three. And then you would take your doubled over single, put it on the end and slide it through. So that will also work. Um, and if you wanted to have black eyes with like white pupils around, you've probably seen this before. You can take a white band and with each of your, your eyes, you wrap it once on each side and that will kind of thicken it up. It does make for some really big eyes though. But that being said, you could then take your two eyes and slide them over. Uh, you just want to try and keep that white on the outside when you do that. Okay, so we have a couple of options there. And whichever kind of eye you make, you want you do want to put it across from the third peg down on one side to the third peg down on the other. We're going to separate the eyes out a little bit. And if you can, reach between and bring your eye band over the third peg down in the middle. And that just helps keep the eyes separate and holds it in place. Okay. I believe we only have one more thing to do to get the, the face ready to go, and that is the hair extensions. Uh, if you want to make these a little longer or shorter, you can. I'm going to be doing um, eight sets of double black bands. So I'll take a single, wrap it twice, and pull it onto eight sets of doubles. So here's one. That's two together. This is the second one. And our third one. Four, five. You can make her hair thicker by making these chains thicker using more than two each, but I don't think you really need to. This is my seventh, and we'll do one more. I'll show you how to attach this, and then we'll make the second chain. So this is similar to what we did with the uh, with the jacket. I'm going to take the ones that are on the top and put them on the top center peg. And then I'm going to stretch it down and around. So let me turn this over so you can see. And I will take one part out of each of the next pieces of the chain and bring it over each of the next pegs. 
So this is the third one down. I'll bring it over that third peg. And the next one will go over the fourth peg and like so. Once it's attached, you can ease it off. It is connected at the top, so it should be secure there. And we'll make one of these for the other side. And then we can loop it. We just have a couple of finishing touches to do after that. So single wrapped twice, eight sets of double black. This is four. onto the top center peg. Stretch it around and as you're stretching you're taking one just one of the sections from each of the next parts of the chain here. The reasoning once more is so that your hair stays close to the head and doesn't fly all over the place. Okay so there we have it. Uh, we are going to start looping up from that fifth peg down in the middle where the neck is. If you feel like the body is in the way, you can pull it so that it's sitting on the next peg down. But if you feel comfortable just holding it out of the way, that's just as well. We're going to find the two bands that are above the others and they're going to be coming to the side closest to you or the last side that you looped from. And the next two are going to go to the side furthest from you. And the last two are going to loop up in the middle. Oops. Sorry, we've got a visitor here. Hold on. Please, Lee. You going to help? Oh, that was my phone. All right, excuse us. We've got work to do. Well, let's go back and work up the side. So push back everything but your bottom most to skin tone and bring those forward. Reach for your next two bottom most skin tone and bring them forward. And then you're pushing back until you get the bottom two black and up. And the last thing here is to get the two black which are on the bottom and bring those to the top center peg. Okay, we'll repeat that on the other side. You can turn your loom around if that helps you out. And bottom two for each set. Skin tone the first two times and black the next time. And then you're looping in to the middle. And finally, let's go back to that fourth peg from the top. Reach in for your skin tones, loop up once, twice, bless you, Paisley. And one more time, bless you. She's sneezing right on my phone, that's so disgusting. Okay, grab one more black band or two if you want it to be extra secure and put it on the first two fingers of your right, or sorry, your left hand, if you are right-handed like I am. And we're gonna take the hook, point the open part away from you, go straight down through all the bands on the top center peg, and there are a lot. Catch your band on the hook and keep some tension while you pull it back up and through. When you come up, you want the open part to turn so that it's pointing upwards. And then you can put on the other piece and pull this second one, the further one, up and over the first and over the top and that will create a slip knot. So from here, get a hold on that. You can put it on a C-clip or a hook or hold it on your finger and we're going to release everything from the loom. a little bit tight this one so we'll do it carefully I get so impatient at this part in the project though I kind of just want to be done all right so I uh, turned the side that you want for your front and um, I want this side for my front okay and in the back you're going to use your hook to secure that um, that's that securing band 
So I'm turning it to the back. I'm going to go under a couple of bands, grab that finishing one, that closing one, pull it through, and this can go onto a C clip. And we just have a couple of things to do with the belt, I believe. Oh, right. So if at this point you have used beads, you can draw a pupil on to your beads. I'm just going to turn mine around so we see the pupils that are already there. And you don't want to turn. You could just make new ones. The other side here. But I kind of like these little dots that are on already. Mm. All right, it's not going to work. And short it is. So we'll try to be careful not to get it on the bands, and I'm just going to draw a couple of circles on here. You can make them bigger or smaller as you like, or you can use a uh, different color of Sharpie if you'd uh, like to get a different color on here. Although I feel like her eyes are already sort of dark. Um, okay, for our the leg band we'll do next, because that's super easy. Two brown bands. Stretch. Put it over the left leg, twist, bring it back over, and position it where you'd like it to be. The belt is a, a little more finicky, but I'll show you what I did here. I took three brown bands, I put them up over both of the legs to the waist. And then to secure it, I went to the back. I went under a green band, over the brown and under a green band, and pulled it back through. And I put that onto a C-clip, and that will keep the belt from falling off, and it'll keep it sitting roughly where it is. If you want it to sit significantly lower on the other side, you can do something like that on the other side. I left mine more or less center though. And then for the belt, let's see if I've got another gray around. Okay, so I would suggest a gray or a silver. Um, this is a darker one. But what I did here is I took my hook and went under the belt. I pulled my gray or silver under. I went back up through. And then I put one over the end of the like the further one over the end of the hook to create a slip knot. And then, I'm just going to hold that for a minute, I went in through the back to the front, hook that through, and put that on the same seat clip. And you can fiddle around with that a little bit, but that's more or less it. Now you can see when I did the arms on this one, they, they kind of did turn the wrong way. So I probably coulda, shoulda popped them around when I was doing that part. And they will be a little bit, uh, they will have a little more more motion away from the body just because they are so so puffy but that at any rate is what we've got if you would like to do the goggles as i said you could throw on some beads there uh, tie it on with some thread um, you could use a couple of silver bands you could use some wires or you might do a printout cutout uh, or other other type that's that works for you depending on what materials you have handy but I'd I'd be very interested to see what you come up with and how yours works out so there is princess from the walking dead and I thank you for watching bye everybody